Hey, feels Mick. good to be home. Yeah, it does. Well, um, I want to jump right into uh, where we were yesterday, too. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just no, no, I'm a no, one-track no. mind guy. Ricky, good to see you, too. Ryan and Jerry and Dion and Victor and hey, uh, anybody that's watching out there uh, on the group and so on and so forth. Um, welcome. I want to jump right into where we left off yesterday real briefly, and then I want to jump into role-playing and working on phone stuff, too. But um, any questions anybody has that, that's pressing? Like, hey, I need help on this right, right away. I'm working on a deal. I'm in the middle of something. Anybody got anything that's hot and heavy? Okay. All right. Let's jump right into this. I want to show you guys yesterday. I talked about advertising a deal, a lease option deal. Okay. Um, and then today I want to share with you how I got a response um, on, Oh, this is the wrong one. Sorry guys. This is the right one here. Seven, six, seven. <clears throat> oh, and that was the Capricorn court. Yeah, and uh, this is off Craigslist, actually. Craigslist drew first blood, uh, first first lead that came in. Um, so what we have here is somebody that responded to that ad, and uh, they just said, I'm very interested in the property. How can I view the property? Okay, so I would have normally just responded to this right away. This came in last night at, after 10 o'clock, though. So I thought, well, you, since I'm doing this as I, I, you know, as an example kind of in front of people, um, let me just show you what I would do and how I would respond because you know, how, how do you respond when a tenant buyer hits you up on one of these ads? Okay. Well, since this is a lease option, yeah. it's all in the lease options 2.0 course. Okay. If you don't have the course, you can join the VIP. If you're in the VIP and you don't have the course, we just need to connect you with it. Okay. Cause it's yours. Um, if you slide down here to the, part of the training that has the disposition side. Okay. You can see there's a module on how to pre-screen tenant buyers. If you slide down there, there's a, a section of that module that says screening a tenant buyer cheat sheet. I'm going to click that right there because that's going to help me and remind me of how I need to communicate with this tenant buyer prospect, this lead I just got. Okay. So it says, follow the guideline when qualifying a prospective tenant buyer. Great. Cause that's what I want to do. First off, Make sure they're wanting to rent to own or lease purchase, not just rent. Okay. So in my response, I need to ask them if they're if they're wanting to rent to own or lease purchase or just rent something, you know, because I'm not in just the rental business. Right? <laughs> I'm in the uh the the rent to own business. Okay. So if they're if they're just looking to rent, that they're not gonna qualify. Okay. Then I need to find out if they have two good years of rental history, jobs that produce income to, enough to support the payment, option fee, uh, what, what are they working with, okay, willing to do a tenant screening, okay, are they? All right, so there's a lot of stuff here I want to find out, but am I going to try to find all that out right away in the first message? Probably not, okay? What I'm going to do is... I'm just going to write a nice note. Simha, thank you for asking. The property is currently available as a rent to own opportunity. Are you looking to rent to own or just simply rent? Question mark. Okay. Um, please let me know if you are interested if you are interested in a rent to own opportunity as i'd love to speak with oop, with you further on this matter and get you inside to take a look because remember that's what she said how do i get inside this property to take a look okay whoa 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 slow the horses down sally you want to go right in and take a look right away okay whoa 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 i need to know who you are and what you're working with show me what you got show me what you're working with <laughs> you know okay i'm not going to ask her to shake her ass 
Okay. <laughs> uh, watch yourself. <laughs> All right. All right. I think that's a pretty good note. Um, based on my tenant screening cheat sheet, that's a good conversation starter. Now, when she gets back to me, okay, if she, if and when she gets back to me, uh, and I'm going to do this to any other lead that comes in, all right, I'm just going to step them through a text or email conversation where I find out some of this information and kind of get a good sense of whether or not they may be a good tenant buyer or not. If they're not going to be a good tenant buyer, then guess what? I got to disqualify them. If they are a good tenant buyer, then I get them inside to take a look. Pretty simple stuff, huh? Not too complicated. Any questions on that? That's just a sneak peek of what happens on the buyer side. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is probably for down the road a piece, but when it comes to your qualifying, how, how deep do you go? Like I know, for instance, um, with some of the self-employed people and stuff, it can get a little shaky, you know, in terms of they don't have paycheck stubs. They don't have any place that you can, yeah. you know, do all that. Um, you know, do you have a, a, a methodology that you use in qualifying them or do you just ask for some bank statements? How do you go about that? That's a great question. Um, I definitely get a lot of phone calls and text messages, emails from people that are self-employed and they don't have, like you said, uh, and many, most of them don't have any kind of record of regular paychecks, like a pay stub or anything like that. And in some cases they don't even have any flipping tax returns. All right. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, you at least need to have something here. Um, I need to see bank statements. I need to see something that shows that you got what you say you got when you can do what you say you can do. Now, obviously this is a conversation I'm going to have with the tenant buyer after, um, you know, I've kind of got a good feel for them. Um, I'm not going to ask somebody for their bank statements right away. As soon as I meet them, no, um, no, no. I'll converse with the guy, build some rapport, uh, listen to his story, find out how much he has uh, cash ready to go. And if everything seems pretty good, um, you know, I might say, Hey, you know, I want to let you get in that house, but a couple things, number four on my qualification cheat sheet was, is that you need to be able to, uh, you know, do a background screen for me. And we're just, it's just a normal check, man. Nothing special. I don't even get to see their, their information, their private stuff. Um, it's all handled by TransUnion, one of the three major credit reporting agency bureaus. And that's on mysmartmove.com. I just set it up, send it over there. They get an email from TransUnion, mysmartmove.com, and they just answer the questions, put their credit card in there, pay for the background screen. I get an email back from them that says, hey, this is an A client, this is a B client, this is a C client, or this is a we don't recommend client. <laughs> I just take their recommendation. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless... The guy's like, hey, here's what's going on. When you do this background check and you get the credit, it's going to be negative, negative, negative. I get that. Here's the story why. And we're working with a mortgage guy to fix these problems over the next two years. If the guy still has a great story, I might still go do it with him. Okay. You know, he needs a shot at it. He wants to take a shot at it. Everything seems right and good. He seems strong, except when I run his credit report, it comes back like he he's bad you know well you know i've had bad credit before too right yeah <laughs> it's not hard to do okay yeah. yeah um now if it comes back that he's a sex offender uh child molester or something it's going to be hard for me to sell that to the homeowner oh yeah that's a deal killer <laughs> you know what i mean um yeah. so i always tell the tenant buyers you know hey listen this is not a you know a thing where you have to have perfect credit or anything. We're not looking for that. We're just trying to do a simple check to make sure you are who you say you are and that you can do. We think you're making a good decision here. We want you to make a good decision. We want it to be a good decision for us too. So, you know, all things considered, that's all it is. It's, it's a routine deal. And like I said, we just get the, we just get the recommendation. So I can easily show that to the homeowner and say, Hey, listen, see, this is what TransUnion says about them. And in some cases, you don't want to show the homeowner, I swear to God. Okay, because it does look like bloody murder on there. But they do have a plan. Okay, 
Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, I'm sorry, I went down a bunny trail here. The question then becomes, how do you sell that to the tenant? I mean, how do you sell this tenant buyer with bad credit on bad recommendation on TransUnion's My Smart Move? How do you sell that to the seller? Right. You know, well, in a lot of cases, you don't have to promise to show that to the seller. In some cases, you do promise to show that to the seller, put them in the driver's seat, let them make a decision. Okay. All that's well and good. In those cases, what I've done is, is I have shown them the bad reports. And I've said, now see, here's what's going on. Their background check is good on legal stuff. They have two years of good rental history. They have, we have verified their work and they have good income enough to support the payment. They have credit problems. See, it says right there in big red, decline, do not recommend using this client. Okay. You see that Mr. Homeowner in big red? That's exactly what I've been telling you about all along. They need a couple of years to get that fixed and they're working a system to do it. Is this unreasonable or, or can we go ahead and move forward? You know what? At this point, man, most of them are like, well, okay, who are they working with? You know, they'll ask a question or two just to, you know, play it cool. He's but for the most part, yeah, I, for the most part, I, I've not had a lot of rejections on that. I've had a couple you know, for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. but, but for the most part, no. But I, that's really me just pulling back the curtain and saying, hey, you know, this is part of making the deal work. When you have a tenant buyer that doesn't come to the table and has, a, has an acceptable credit or acceptable anything it's just their their life is shitty mm -hmm. they've never paid anybody mm -hmm. okay i mean it's a tough do you even really want to do deals I, i'll give you one example man and it's okay. hard on my heart because i want to help these people okay yeah. the, the guy's been a carpenter for two he for more than two years okay so he's he's stable doing his own self-employed carpentry work he, he's like a trim guy okay the, the missus, um, she has been employed. Um, I don't remember what she did, but she ended up having some medical problems. Okay. And so they ended up having, she continued working, but she ended up having all these hospital bills and shit on her credit. So now her credit shot, she mm. got no credit and she's sick on top of that. Mm. Then he, then he's like, yeah, but, but look, we make enough income. We make enough income. And we want to buy a house, but here's the problem. I'm self-employed. I can't really buy the house. Yeah. So we want to rent to own this deal. I told the guys like, listen, I understand where you're at. You got to get a plan. This is a 36 month adventure. You got to have a plan to buy the house within 36 months. Do you have a plan? He said, yes, we have a plan. We're going to pay cash for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to help this dude, but I don't believe your I don't believe your story, man. No. I mean, I feel sorry for the sick wife. I feel sorry for the medical bills on the credit and the ruined credit and the ruined everything. I I just can't do this deal with you. Yeah. Uh, that sucks when it happens, but it does happen. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I went off on a tangent, guys. Oh, no, no, no. You're painting a picture that we're probably going to see at some point in the career while we're doing this lease option game. And those are decisions we're probably going to have to make. And like in that story, it, it, that's, that picture just doesn't come together. It doesn't, uh, doesn't jive. Well, you know, <laughs> they like to ask me questions like, if... Uh, if we do this, can we buy a house on just my credit and not hers? And I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You need to get a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not the mortgage guy. Right. I'm not loaning you the money. I'm asking you to talk to a mortgage guy. And sometimes getting guys like this to talk to a mortgage guy and get a plan is like pulling mule's teeth, man. You just can't hardly get them to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, uh, why not? This is your financial future, guys. This yeah. is your, your, you're wanting to buy the biggest asset you'll ever buy in your whole flipping life. And you don't want to make a 10 minute phone call to make sure it's the, the right way, the, right. the best way. I don't, I just can't get it, you know? So you're going to have to callous up a little bit on the buyer side because you're going to hear a lot of boohoo 
you know, my life is over stories and I need a refresh start and you're the guy that's going to help me. Okay. You're going to get a lot of that too. And you're going to just have to callous up and just be like, you know what I own and con- or I control an asset. Mm-hmm. I am not turning this asset over to you clowns. Right. You got to gotta kind of develop that. If you don't, you're going to get taken advantage of. Okay. And they'll con you and they'll tell you, Oh, I got the money. The down payment money's coming on Friday and, and all that. Let's go ahead and do the deal today. And if you're desperate and, and you don't have the experience to know, then you go ahead and do the deal. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then on Friday, guess what? They ain't, they only got like a quarter of the money and then they're going to give you the money. Then the next month, guess what? You in the scam now, mm-hmm. you in the middle of it now. Okay. Mm-hmm. You got to harden up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. I want to show you guys this. Let's do this phone stuff. Phone stuff. Recap. We we're talking Wednesday night. Can y'all see that? The three sections. This is one. This is two. We haven't talked about the closing much on Wednesday nights yet, but one and two, one is the agenda. Two is the qualification section. All right. And then I said there was three rules that we talked about. Let's recap real quick before we dive into this. All right. What's, what's the three major things that we want to remember about the agenda. One is I'll give you, I'll give you the start. One is you got to lay out the roadmap, right? The roadmap. You got to lay out a roadmap. If you don't lay out the roadmap, guess who does? The homeowner. And they're just going to take the conversation wherever they want it to go. Not not really where you want it to go. Okay, roadmap. What's what's the second thing? Anybody remember? Want to shout it out if you know it. Okay. Permission to ask questions. You got to always remember to get permission to ask the questions. Hi, my name is Justin. I saw your property online. It was kind of interesting to me. I thought I would uh, give you a call, ask you a few questions. You could ask me a few questions. And if it's not a good fit for you, you can just fire me. Is that cool? Always lay out that roadmap and get that permission to ask questions. They don't realize it, but what are you getting permission to do? You are getting permission to control this conversation right off the bat. If you don't do this, you're not getting permission to control the conversation and they're going to just take it wherever they want it to go. What's the third thing you need to do? You need to tell them it's okay to fire you. Okay. Tell them it's okay to fire you. I know I'm getting messier as I write. Yeah. If it's not a good fit, it's okay to tell me no. That's the agenda. Those are the three parts of the agenda. Okay. Hi, I'm Justin. I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking to pick up my next property deal. I saw this one online. I thought it was pretty interesting. I wanted to call you and ask you a few questions. You could ask me a few questions and if it's not okay, or if it doesn't feel comfortable, if it's not good, if it doesn't fit, just tell me, no, you can fire me right now. Is that fair? That's a perfectly worded agenda. It includes all three. Okay. Now what's rule number one. Anybody remember? Always set the agenda. If you do not start the conversation outright, it's not going to end right. Always set the roadmap. Always ask for permission to ask questions and always tell them it's okay if it's not a good fit to fire you. This will save you in a tight spot later in the conversation if they get sketchy on you. I can always go back to this and say, hey, listen, I'm just an investor looking to buy a property. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. And like I said, if you're uncomfortable, you can tell me no. Is this over, Mr. Homeowner, or can we go ahead and talk about it further? Boom. Power move. I love it. Right? 
I go back to that agenda anytime somebody gets sketchy on me. Okay. Always set the agenda. If you don't set the agenda, you can't refer back to it. Okay. You don't start out right. You won't end right. Qualification section. There are four questions that you must ask. Number one, anybody remember what number one is? Why? <laughs> it is, hey, here's how I like to say it. Hey, uh, how long have you lived in the property and why would you be wanting to sell now? You need to know why, right? If you don't know their why, how do you know what to offer? You don't. If you don't know their why, how do you know their motivation level? You don't. Okay. So in the qualification section, what we're doing here is we're asking questions. And these questions are going to lead us to a motivation level of one to 10. If it's a six through 10, great. That's somebody you're going to work with. If it's a one through four, that's somebody you're not going to work with. You're going to get off the phone. And if it's a five, that means you need to talk more. You need to ask more questions. Why is the first question? What's the second question? The second question is just as important as the first, and you must ask a question about the money. Here's how I like to ask it. What is the property worth and why would you be wanting, I mean, I'm sorry, what is the property worth and what are you asking for it? What do you need? What do you have to have? What is the property worth? What do you have to have? What's your asking price? Okay. Money. Isn't it fun? Now, just simple questions. Number three, what's number three? Timing, <laughs> timing, right? We need to know what the timing is. So the question is, uh, here's how I like to say it. Mr. Homeowner, I'm kind of in a hurry to do something. I'd like to do something as early as today. You're probably not looking to do something that quickly, are you? Isn't that a cool question? That gets them to chase me a little bit. If they're, if they're motivated at all, they're chasing me now. Got to ask it about the time. What's the last thing? What's the last question you got to ask? Their commitment level, right? What kind of commitment level do they have? Are, are they able to even make a commitment? Okay, that's a great question. Are you even able to make a commitment? All right, here's how I like to ask it on a, on a homeowner phone call. Mr. Homeowner, if I were able to make you an offer today that met your needs, are you in a position to be able to accept that offer or are there other people that need to be involved or anything that would keep us from doing business? That's how I've kind of learned to word it over the years. I, I word it differently you know, pretty much every time I talk, but I need to know if this is the guy that's signing the deal, if this is the guy making the decision, if this is not the guy making the decision. I want to know if this is the guy that wants to have an open house this weekend and he's not going to decide until next week. Okay. I want to, I want to know, you know, what's the commitment level, you know, or if I were able to make you an offer today, Mr. Homeowner, is this something that you could do or are there other folks involved? You know, are, are you in a position to be able to do this today if I make you the right offer? You know what? If the guy says no, do I really want to get into it with him? Not, not really. If the guy says, well, you know, I can't really do it today because uh, I got this open house this weekend on Saturday I set up and I'm, I'm, I've got several people that's called on that and I want to make sure that, you know, I might get an offer this weekend, so I don't want to, 
you know, I don't want to decide till maybe Sunday or Monday or something. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Well, I'll call you. I can't be at the open house Saturday. So here's what I'll do. I'll call you on Monday and see if it's, it's still around is if, if, you know, is this over Mr. Homeowner? You're not interested in making a sale today because you want to, you're so excited about doing an open house. I, I don't get it, but is it over? <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. I won't go into it. Why present? See, when Claude talks about premature presentation, he talks about that in, in reference to you trying to present your lease option deal before you've asked these four questions before you've spent time asking and qualifying in this qualifying section, what's rule number two guys, rule number two, rule number two is you got three minutes. You got three minutes guys. That's rule number two, three minutes to do what qualify or disqualify. That's what the qualification section is. It's qualification questions. I'm trying to qualify or disqualify this person in three minutes or less. How am I going to do that? By asking these four questions first. That's how I do it. I ask these four questions first. Some people are like, well, I want to find out more about the house. And is there a tile floor in the kitchen and in the foyer? Justin? Okay. I don't, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah. What's up, Ryan? If it's a pretty house deal, you said you'll ask about the lease or the owner finance up front before the three questions or how you do it again? Oh, no, no. What I'll do is I'll go through the roadmap here, the permission to ask questions, and I'll tell them it's okay to fire me. When they say, okay, that all sounds good, then I'll ask them how long they've lived in the property and why they would want to sell. They're going to give me an answer. I'm going to have a brief interlude here. We'll, we'll talk about it later. A brief interlude where I bond a little bit, but then I'm going to ask quickly after that, I'm going to say, uh, how much is the property worth and what are you asking? And when he answers that question, if I, if it's not clear, I'll, I'll ask more, but I'll, I'll basically get the answer right there. Then I'll say, okay, well, I'm kind of in a hurry to do something. Uh, maybe even as early as today, uh, you guys probably aren't wanting to do anything like that today. Are you? I'm finding out about time. When he answers that, then I'll say, okay, is there anybody else that needs to be included in this? Or if I make an offer that fits, are we, are we ready to do something? If he says yes to that, if I can put him on the scale of one to 10, having the answers to these questions, after the answers to these four questions, I should be able to put him on a scale of one to 10. I should know enough. So, you know, so my question is, even if you know it's a pretty house deal from the beginning, you just take the same approach, ugly or pretty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if, okay, and if right here he says, why? Because I'm a tired landlord and I'm sick of having this house. And then I ask him about the money and he says, oh, the money, I'm, I'm flexible on that. I'm like, okay, great. And the time down here. Um, he's like, well, I, I do something right away. And yes, I'm the commitment maker guy. I'll do all that. But here's the thing. I got to have cash. Okay. The reason why I'm asking that, because last week, I think I told you that I get a lot of those responses that says, uh, no lease, make me an offer. But when you search it, you know, it's a pretty house. So I don't yeah. even call them because I know they're not, they're not going to accept the lease. And I can't make a cash offer because, you know, either way, I don't think it's going to work. That's why I don't even call these guys. But you, but you said I was wrong for that. Yeah. I call everyone um, that responds positively at all. They might not even know what lease option means or a lease with the uh, ability to purchase. They, they might not have a good understanding on that. If that was your text message that went out, I get through the agenda. I get through the entire qualification section before and I put them on a scale of one to 10 before I make an offer. That's the last section, the closing section. So in the closing section is when I will bring up an offer. Okay. And so I either realize during this qualification section that they're low on the scale and I got off the phone 
I realized that they're high on the scale and I'm going to stay on the phone. But I also realized whether or not I need to make a lease option offer or a cash offer. That's all happening right here in this four questions. In these four questions, you should know whether or not in the next few minutes, you're going to continue talking and make either a lease option offer or a cash offer. I hope that helps, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of learning. I thought, you know, a long time ago, I know all this stuff, but actually I found out I'm still elementary, you know? <laughs> well, I don't think you're as elementary as you, you might think. Um, it's, it's a, it's a three minute rule, man. I think this rule here might be getting you. The three minute rule. You got three minutes. If I said, listen guys, and we're going to role play this in about two minutes. We're going to role play this. I'm going to say you got three minutes to get through the agenda and get through at least these four questions in the qualification section, three minutes. And then we're going to ask you after the three minutes is over, we're going to stop the role play and we're going to see if you got through both. Right. And then we're going to find out where you place them on the scale of one to 10. And we're going to find out, if it's a lease option kind of deal or if it's a cash money kind of deal. Does everybody understand the rules of the role play? Nobody does. <laughs> uh, definitely understand my friend. Okay. I'm writing down rule number three. You must fire a disqualified prospect. <laughs> Rule number three, you must fire them. Remember, you got three minutes to either hire them or fire them. How you're going to do that is by setting the agenda with these three points and asking these four questions. Now, you might need to turn the screw a little bit and dig a little deeper but you need to get these four questions answered. That's how you're going to know. Now the rest though, if it's a good client, if it's a good prospect, you'll stay on longer than three minutes. And then you'll ask about is the house need repairs and you know, you're not late on the payment or anything. Are you and all the other wonderful things you guys want to know, but these are the most important. You got to get these done. This is how you do it in three minutes or less. Boom. That's how you stay in the business. That's how you make money. That's how you do it without getting worn out and uh, having people reject you and crush you in 35 minutes of hard, laborious phone work. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. I've been on the phone with a seller for 35 minutes and got off and felt like my inner child was wounded. Like for real. <laughs> What I say last week, like I had to go contemplate my whole life on the tree of woe. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? You guys want me to go first or somebody want to volunteer to go first? We're going to do the agenda and the qualification section. We're going to stop before closing today because I think we need to practice getting this three minute qualify or disqualify game on three minutes to qualify or disqualify. Who wants to take a stab at it? Somebody. Yeah. I'm trying to be the the buyer, the caller, you know. You, you want to be the buyer, you, right? Yeah, I'm 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 the you know I'm the buyer, you know. You uh, if you want to be the seller, you know. I want to try myself as uh, setting the agenda and all this. Okay. You 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 um Justin, you want me to do it or are you going to do the seller? You guys pick. You do it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? I got. <laughs> I wish I had a. I wish I had a more battle technical. of the gray beards. <laughs> battle of the gray beards. You guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys are some pretty guys too. I love you both. You're wonderful. <laughs> the beard thing. I would do a beard, but I, it, I have a big patch over here that don't grow. Victor, how you fix it? Yeah, I, I do too. No, <laughs> do I do too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You well, can't tell, beard, man. My beard makes me look older than what I am really. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, um, Three minutes. Okay. I'll flip the timer 
when you say hello. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Reed, and I'm calling regarding your house on uh, on such street. Uh, oh yeah. Did Certainly. I get the right, did I get the right place? You did. <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. Like I said, my name is Reed, and I'm an investor here. Uh, I'm looking to buy my next investment, and I saw your house online, and uh, kind of interest me. So I figured I'll give you a call and ask you a few questions, and uh, and just chat with you. And uh, if you don't like uh, my conversation, you will. I mean, you are welcome to tell me to quit anytime. Is that is that fair enough? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, yes. Um, it looks pretty house from the pictures. Uh, um, how long did you live there? And uh, how, I mean, how did you own the, How long did you own the house? And how long did you live in there? Um, I've owned it for about uh, five years. I've lived in it the whole time. Okay. So, uh, so you're not living in it at this time? Uh, no, I'm still here. Oh, you're still there. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what are you still in at this time after this five years? Um, Great. Time to move on, you know. I um, uh, got a job transfer, and I have to uh, move on. Um, off the role play, real quick. I lost my yeah. camera, but I'm still here with you. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. You said you're moving for a job transfer, so yes. uh, uh -huh. do you have a timeline? I mean, when you're gonna move? Or? Um, yeah, it looks like I got about uh, maybe 60 days. Okay, and. Um, so you're trying to sell it yourself now? Or you have an agent? You want to be involved in it, or? Well, right now I'm trying to do it myself. Um, um, yeah, it looks like I got. A Sorry, guys, my fault. Okay, um, I, I'm actually trying to do it myself right now. Um, you know, if I don't sell it by the time I have to leave, then I probably have to put it in the hands of an agent. But uh, right now, I'm doing it my own, on my own. Okay. Um, do you know, I mean, I mean, I don't know if the house needs any repair or anything like that. Do you know how much is worth as at this time? I mean, do you have um, how much the house is worth? Well, from what I can, from what I can tell, based on some of the research I've done, uh, I think it's worth about 320. 320, okay. Yeah. That, is that off Zillow or you have an agent uh, that gave you that price? Yeah, you know, just kind of um, looked at some of the information from Zillow and, you know, some of the stuff the agents put on the door about what's sold in the neighborhood, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so nothing major as far as repairs that you know of, like, uh, my concern is the roof, the ACs, you know, anything major that need to be addressed. Oh, no, no, the, the roof is fine. The house is only seven years old. I bought it like uh, two years after it was built. Um, so, yeah, the, the roof is in good shape, still has a long shelf life. Okay, that's fine. Um, how, how, uh, how fresh is the pictures on Zillow? Are they, uh, are they up? Uh, how, how old are they? I mean, I'm not sure uh, when you took them. Uh, I, took them I took them this year. I took them before okay. I, you know, put it on. So, yeah, those are, those are pretty current. The updated pictures. Okay, yeah, that looks really pretty good. I mean, uh, <clears throat> well, everything sounds fine. I mean, uh, if uh, I like it, if I decide to make you an offer, would you be in a position to make a commitment today or uh, accept an uh, offer? Yeah, I'll make a commitment if it's the right offer, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there other, other people involved in the decision or you just, uh, you know? Yeah, wanna... I got, uh, you know, I got wifey. <clears throat> okay, does she have to be on the phone with us, you think, or are you... Oh no, no. no. Um, she, she, you know, she's gonna. She, we, we decide together. But um, you know, um, can, I'll can set I, everything. I'll set I everything. Up? Better can know I what we're doing, guys. Huh? Can I stop in here? Okay. Yeah, great. Um, this, this is where I get lost. Now I can't. I can't. Okay. You know. Okay. Let's uh, let's critique you real quick, man. Um, you went about four minutes instead of three. That's okay. Good job. Good job. Uh, the agenda. Did he lay out the roadmap? Anybody? Yes, no, maybe. I, I felt like he did. Uh, yeah, I feel like he did. Okay, permission to ask questions. Did he get permission to ask questions? Yes. Yep. Did he give you permission to fire him? Y yes, he did. Did he, did he ask you about why you would be wanting to sell? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Did he ask you about money? The price Money. and the value. Yes. What about the time, the timing? Is this something he you would want to do today or next year? Right. Yes, he did. 
Okay, what about the commitment level and your ability to make a decision today? Yes. Yes, he did. did. Okay, great job, Ryad. Now, here's the proof of the pudding. On a scale of one to 10, where do you put this guy? As far as selling the price, I don't think he was very motivated as far as coming down, but he was motivated as far as wants to sell, but not the price that I was going to give him. You know, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Okay. If I, could, I don't know if you knew enough at that point. We, I don't know if we've gotten far enough for you to really determine, you know, my yeah. motivation. I, de I definitely hadn't determined my own motivation at that point. Well, so this okay. is why I want to okay. stop it because I kind of froze up and I don't know how to take it yeah. from. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what you could have done, and you should have should have done in this case, because the answers he was giving you were kind of cold. <laughs> they were kind of cold answers. Right. Like they were just analytical brain answers. Okay. They weren't heartfelt at all. You didn't determine really a motivation level because you took the first answer that he gave kind of at face value and moved forward. That's what I call checking the boxes. Okay. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted you to do, Ryan. So good there. Okay. Good. You didn't do anything wrong here. I'm just saying um, in the future, when you ask these questions and he gives you the answer, why let's just, let's just play this right now real quickly. Um, why would you be wanting to sell now? Say, say the answer again, Victor, if you can remember what you said. Oh, job transfer. Yeah. Oh, 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 a job transfer. Okay. Yeah. When do you got to go? You see, I'm going to ask another question because job transfer isn't enough information. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create a motivation level for me. It's just the reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to find out if the job mot motivation is, you know, something like, Hey, I got to get out by, I got to be there. I got to move to Seattle and I'm 8,000 miles away, you know, or whatever it feels like. And I got to get there by the end of the month. Okay. See now that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you'll have to turn the screw a little bit and get past that initial response to get to the true pay dirt, okay? So don't just take the first reason and be like, okay, check the box, move forward. Dig a little bit here. Use the why, okay? Why do you, you want to sell? I want to move job transfer. Okay, uh, uh, why are you having to sell? Is it like a long way off? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's moving a long way off. Okay. Um, is that something that has to happen really, really quickly or see, that's also kind of part of the timing question down here. You know, is, is it going to be in a situation where you're going to have two payments if you don't sell this one? You see, I'm, I'm kind of digging for more why here. I'm also creating some empathy with the guy. But see, but see this way we went past the three minutes. <laughs> yeah. You went past the, the, the three minutes. And that's okay. We're practicing. Okay. So don't sweat it. If you had added that in, we might be sitting at five or six minutes. That's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. It's better than the 40, 35, 40 minutes <laughs> that you would be doing if you weren't using a, a, a plan, you know? Um, okay. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah, uh, you want to do it again, Riot, or we want to switch roles. Anybody else want to volunteer? If somebody wants to volunteer, that's fine. You got to practice this stuff though, too. You got to practice it, and you got to get the answers to these four questions, not just the sports news weather answers. The, the answers, okay. Uh, Y'all want to switch roles, Victor? You want to be the caller? Oh yeah, that's fine. I, I was just kind of standing back because I do it all the time. I wanted to let somebody yeah. else have it. Yeah. Okay, so. Ricky, Michael. Debbie, Aisha. Yeah, I do it. Boom. I mean, I'm out, Ricky. What, what am I, the home seller or what? Oh, you want to be the seller. You know, I'll do that. I mean, at least the first two, the agenda and the qualification. Let me try to work through that. Boom. Let's do it. Who's going to be the homeowner? Ricky's going to call and do the agenda and qualification. I'll do it. <clears throat> Michael Goolsby stepping up, bringing the noise, bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Yeah. All right. Ring, ring. Hello? Hey, this is Ricky. I was calling about a property I seen online. Is it still available? Yes, it's still available. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? I'll see if it's be something I'm interested in. Uh, maybe you can ask me a few questions. Uh, if it's something, you know, we can work out. Uh, oh, if it's course. something that won't work, you can just tell me no, and we'll go our separate ways. It sounds good. Sounds good. So what type of question you have for me? I mean, because like say, I got on, the house is on Zillow. You know, I've been here for, you know, eight years and uh, it's done. You know, we're trying to move on. We're trying to, my wife wants to move to a different location, a little closer to town. Like we are a little further out in, in we say the woods. Okay. Uh, eight years. Uh, I mean, house in good shape. What kind of condition is it in? Yeah, we did a little work before, before we put on, on online. So we did a little updating to the kitchen and the bathroom. So oh, really? Like I said, yes. So you say it don't need anything? It's good to go. A little ten to eleven care. That's all. Probably you know, something like that. You know, okay. Nothing major. Nothing right. over. I say four or five thousand dollars. How, how soon did you say you was looking to sell? ASAP. I mean, you looking to ASAP. Okay. Uh, what, what was your price? We wanted two seventy five for it. Two seventy five. What What do you think it's worth? I mean, I mean, I think it's probably worth you know, probably about around probably about two eighty five, two ninety, somewhere along there. Okay. Uh, why the discount? I mean, cause it needs a little work. I mean, no, I mean because you know I, I checked out the the market right here. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I want to get something because I know if you know we put it out there on the market, people want to always want to try to come down on you. So okay, that's why that my range. So so I started there. All right, sounds good. Uh, Come on, Ricky. So you're though. asking two seventy five, uh, and you got to have cash offer, or you, you do terms. Just tell me. I mean, like I say, you know, I would rather have cash, but uh, you know, I don't want to keep it on the market too long because, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to really trying to move here, here pretty okay. quick. All right, let me what tell you. What do you, what do you mean by terms? Well, uh, it's, I'm, it, an, it, I'm an investor, so if I do cash, I'm, I'm looking for a discount. Okay. Uh, terms, uh, you know, I'd be willing to put a small amount down, uh, take your payments over, uh, and maybe cash you out in 24, 36 months. Would that be something you'd be interested in? That maybe how much you're talking about putting down? Because, you know, I want at least probably about five or 6000 now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I could do that much. Uh, what, what kind of payments is on it? I mean, what kind of rent could I get out of it, do you think? Uh, I mean, this, the the market right here is like fourteen, okay, fourteen hundred a month. Okay, uh, I could probably do two thousand. Uh, take the payments over, and uh, you know, like I say, cash you out twenty four, thirty six months. I mean, is that sound something you could do? What about uh twenty five hundred? Like I say, I mean, I really don't want to be a trying to be a landlord <laughs> and sell it. You guys are tripping me out. <laughs> Let's pause. Let's pause there, because you, right. you're closing this cat already. Um, <laughs> all right, agenda. Did he set the roadmap? Did he set the yeah, roadmap? He okay. What about getting permission to ask questions? He yep, did. he did. Yeah. What about telling the the homeowner it was okay if it wasn't a good fit? He could tell him to take a hike. He did that. Yeah. He did that. Okay. All right. What about the qualification section? Did he find out why? Kind of yeah. Sort of. yeah. Did you truly find out why? I wanted to dig a little deeper. No. Did you? Did you? What, what, go ahead, Ricky. Tell us. Tell us he about gave me a lot of information up front as far as I thought why he was wanting to sell, what it, what he was wanting to move to the country, and such as that. And that's one of the things that threw me off because he threw so much at me to start with. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that's why yep. you, that's why I kind of did that like okay. that. Yeah, that's cool. I Man, I need practice. This is what happens. This is what happens on the phone, really, for us. So, I'm trying to keep it as close to as what we go through every day because I want to use. I don't want to just role play and just you know we not. Oh, absolutely. I, I want to you know everybody you know get this. Absolutely. I think you did great. I think you did great, Ricky. I think you did great too, Michael. Um, the why you could have okay. Here's how the timer worked out. 
you killed the three minutes. Okay. I mean, you really wrapped this up in three minutes for real. And I guess I'm just not a nurturing kind of guy. You know, I just want to get the facts, get to the meat of it. Well, well, the, then the three minute rule is right up your alley. Okay. <laughs> Um, the only thing that we're critiquing you on really, when you get down to it, because I think you asked about the money. I think you asked about the timing and I think you asked about his commitment level too. Mm -hmm. Amen. The why you could have spent, you just have to catch yourself. You don't have to be the nurturing right. lover boy or anything. Well, I want to I learn that, but I just got to pick up a little bit of it each time. Yeah. You, you just got to catch yourself in that section, slow down, and just make yourself ask a few more questions right? about the why. Oh okay. yeah. Uh, if you got a story too, he's talking about country stuff. You could say, Hey, you know, uh, I grew up in the country and you know, I, I totally feel you, man. Something about the country just makes you feel different. Doesn't right. it? Uh, I like to bond like that too, if I can. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then just move on, you know? Um, yeah, it goes a long way. It goes a long way, but excellent job. Excellent job and great on the timing. Uh, I think you would have closed him. <laughs> yeah, I just need to learn to be a little more smoother. You know, practice, a lot of practice I help. That's why I'm here. I need uh, to. Man, I think you're pretty good already. You know, you're doing good. Yeah, practice always helps everybody, but that's, you know, whether you're great or, or just starting, it doesn't matter, but you, you're, you're doing good, doing good. Anybody else got anything they want to add on that? Uh, rules number one, rule number one, he set the agenda, always set the agenda. Rule number two, he had three minutes to qualify or disqualify, and you know what? He did. <laughs> yeah. Num number three, you must fire a disqualified prospect. Well, this wasn't a disqualified prospect. He qualified him. Yeah. You know, one, one of the challenges that I have to nervousness, they can't sense that in my voice sometimes when I talk. I haven't got over that thing yet, the nervousness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maybe we all get, we all get nervous too. I'm sorry, Victor. No, no, that's okay. Um, if you can get into the habit of playing it in your mind or even doing it to a wall or anything, you know, in front of your screen, you know, kind of go through it and kind of picture yourself as this is something I do. I, I have two images in my head and I'm a giant and they're, smaller than me not because i want to dominate but because i want to feel like i assume a position of authority in the conversation and it's just a visualization trick um but it seems to work it seems to be you know where okay you got to get in here you got to be the person in charge of this conversation and you know if it starts to go bad you know dismiss the conversation or bring it back as quickly as possible and you know so I try to do that before I ever get on the phone. So by the time I get on the phone, um, you know, I'm already have sort of a posture about it. Mm -hmm. That'd be a great fit for me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who wants to be homeowner? I want to do it. I'll be I'll a be, homeowner. Go oh. ahead. Go ahead, Rick. I want to do it. I want to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let, uh, let Ricky do it. Yeah, let Rick go ahead and do it. It's not fair when everybody gets to do it and I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to start the timer when I say hello. All right. You ready? Who's doing it, Victor? Who's doing it? Who's homeowner? Ricky. Ricky's doing it. Ricky. Yeah. Ricky's doing it. Ricky, I'm nervous right now, man. Uh, take it easy, homie. Go for it. Ricky, I'm nervous. Yeah. Ricky, I got butterflies right now, man. I know. Believe better. I know better. Bullshit, you know better. I do. <laughs> I do. I got butterflies right now. Whew, I get butterflies. Who? I do. I get butterflies still to this day. But I know I'm only three minutes in. You can do anything for free. I can practically hold my breath for three minutes. Okay. <laughs> I could be dead for three minutes and you could bring me out of that. Okay. <laughs> Think about that. Okay, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, my name is Justin, and uh, I'm calling about a property I saw online, 123 Apple Cart Way. Is this the right place? Yes, sir. Okay, great, great. Um, hey, I'm looking to pick up a property today, and I've got a, a few questions I'd like to ask you about this one. 
and let you ask me a few questions if you want. And if it's a good fit, great. If it's not, it's okay if you tell me no. Is that cool? Yep, that'll be fine. Okay, awesome. Um, real quick, uh, how long you lived in there, and uh, why are you wanting to sell the place now? I've uh, been here about 10 years. Uh, just got a divorce. My old lady left, took the dog, and I just want to get out of here. Oh, my gosh. She took the dog? Oh, yes. Oh, man. That's a double whammy. Huh? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I love my dog. Yep. <laughs> I do. I really do. I, and I think I've been through what you're going through. Uh, I'll tell you, that's a rough thing, man. Rough thing. Um, so you've been living there for, what did you say, 10 months now? No, about 10 years. Oh, 10 years. And huh. how, how long have you been there by yourself? Um, about two months. Oh, okay. And uh, you're ready to start your life. Yes, I'm ready to get out of here. Too many memories here. I okay, go. I see. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you a bit. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, what are you asking for the place, and what do you what do you think it's worth? Uh, it's worth probably two fifty, and I'd like to get two fifty out of it if I could. Mm. Okay. All right. I see two fifty and two fifty. How'd you come up with those those numbers there? Um, well, that's what the they're going for in the the neighborhood here, the area. Okay. All right. Um, Makes sense. You've got some neighbor's houses that you saw that were like that. Uh, yes, sir. That's all. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm kind of, like I said before, I'm kind of in a hurry to do something looking to maybe even do something as early as today. Okay. Uh, you're probably not, you're probably not uh, in a hurry like that to do anything. Are you? I mean, oh, yeah. you, you wouldn't want to do something like that with me today. Would you? Yeah. Today would be good. If you can do what we need to do, we we'll do it today. No kidding. So if we can do, if I can make you an offer that, that gets you out of that house, and get you what you need you're in a position to be able to make that decision and and move forward with me today yes nobody else need to be you don't need to ask the the, the ex or anything no yeah all right that sounds great ricky cut all right that's the that's the agenda and the qualification let's critique me because i want to get better that's less than three minutes we still got time on the clock y'all Ah, you did good. Yeah, man, that was uh that was off the change right there. You you even you even created bond and commonality in the in less than three minutes. You right. know, tying in the love for the dog and uh, you know understanding his position. Uh, that was uh yeah that was that was proper. See, Justin. Yes, sir. At, at that point, he probably still thinking cash offer, and you haven't represented the creative one yet. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is my challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you guys want to hear me play it the rest of the way? Yes. Yeah. Let's play it the rest of the way. Okay. That's what a lot of people are getting a little yeah. hung up. Yeah. Like I said, that's what a lot of people get hung up at. Okay. So we've finished up the qualification section, would you say? You're right. Okay. So now it's time to transition into the closing section. So here's a preview of that. We're going to dive into this more next Wednesday. Qualification section. And that is, I mean, the closing section next Wednesday, Wednesday night. And so the qualification section is wrapped up. Let's move into the closing section. Um, okay. I understand that uh, you don't need to talk to the missus, uh, the ex, and you're ready to do something today. Um, let's move into the closing section. I'm going to do it right now. Ricky, okay. um, the way I see it, you, you, you kind of went through something I went through before and you're, you got a house that you live in now by yourself, right? And you want to get out of there and start your new life. Maybe you get a house or an apartment. What are you going to, where are you going to move into? Uh, I really don't know. I'm looking at some apartments. Uh, I really don't want an apartment, but uh, I don't know. I mean, if you buy this house, I'll make a quick decision and be gone. Mm, I see. I see. Yeah. You going to stick around town or are you going to go, go somewhere else? No, I'll be around here. Huh. All right. Well, if I were able to offer you, Full price, like you're asking. You're asking full price. Yes. Um, as a real estate investor buying, buying an investment property, how, how am I going to make money, Ricky? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just want to sell. <laughs> and I don't know how you make money. I mean, like I said, I just want to sell. And that was one of my concerns. Being a real estate investor, would you be able to, you know, give me what I need to be gone from here? Uh, well, I'd like to. I want to, Ricky. Uh I got it. I know what I could do. Um, 
how, how about if I if I give you the full two hundred and fifty that you say the house is worth? If I give you the full two hundred and fifty, would you be okay with not having to worry about the maintenance or the payments? Uh, let me take care of the place. Would you give me two years to give you the full price, and would you let me rent it from you in the meantime? Is that something we could talk about, or or probably not? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'd, I'd really have to think about that. I mean, I'd rather be cashed out and be gone. I mean, I really don't want, you know, nothing to happen. And I got to come back to this property. I want to be done with it. I understand. Yeah. Um, have you had a rental property before that went yeah. bad or anything? Yeah, I have. Yep. Oh, okay. I see. All right. Um, well, what I'm offering you is, is the ability to let me take over the, the house and take over the payment. Um, and you know, I'm not going to ask you to come in and fix anything or do anything. If, uh, if that makes you feel more comfortable, I'd love to talk about this further with you or are we done Mr. Homeowner? Well, I mean, it really depends on what, what we're talking about upfront money. I mean, what you put down. Oh, okay. So time out see. So now he's kind of okay with having a lease option. He just wants to have a little bit of money in his pocket. Right. Yep. Okay. Now back in the role play. How much money up front are you talking about, Ricky? Uh, at least five, 5,000. Oh, 5,000. Yeah. Well, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think it's okay that you get some money up front. I really do. Is there anything more reasonable other than 5,000 that we can talk about? Oh, no. I thought that was reasonable. <laughs> well, if I were able to give you 2,500 when we exchange keys, is that something that you could be be comfortable with or or maybe not? When we do 45, I might be willing. Let's split the difference and make it 3,800. About four. We, we might do something. Uh, Ricky, if I put it on the paperwork today that you get four grand when we exchange keys, will you rent that place to me for 24 months and then let me buy it from you at 250,000? I'll send you the paperwork today if you'll sign it. Will you sign it? Uh, I mean, are you going to be in the house? I've got, I don't want to have, you know, Toilets. I don't like. I said I've had rental property. I don't want nobody calling me about no kind of issues they're going to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I want to do as a real estate investor is I want to put some good people in there, and I want to make a little bit of money doing it. But I also need this to be a reasonable solution for you. So, um, the the folks I want to put in there, they're trying to qualify for the home loan. They're going to buy it. So they're not like your typical renters. And plus I've got background checks and stuff and all that, that I do. So if I, if I show that to you and I let you meet these people and you're comfortable with them and I put that in the agreement that, that you, you're going to be able to do that. Is that, does that make you feel better? And can we go ahead and move forward or probably yeah, possibly. not? Possibly. Uh, if they become a problem though, I mean, who am I dealing with them or you? I mean, I rather well, deal with you because I'm talking with you now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, in this particular case, um, you know, they're going to be living in the home. So if something horrible did go wrong, we would have to get them out of mm -hmm. the home. And that would usually be uh, what would normally be the case. If, if I weren't involved, what would you have to do? I'd have to get them out, but I would, I would yeah. know who I'm putting in, I guess. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd feel more comfortable if I yes, knew who's going in. Yes, sir. I'm going to, I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, put it in the agreement here that you can meet these folks and you can qualify or disqualify them at your own discretion. If that, if that makes you feel better about it, um, I'll, I'd be more than happy to do that. If that's something you're willing to do with me today. Uh, yeah, that's a good chance. You bring me a good tenant. Uh, I can, you know, see their background as far as job, you know, stuff like that. Rental history. Uh, I might be willing to do something. I just want to be gone. I think you want to be gone too, man. And I don't blame you. And uh, I'd like to make that happen for you. So I'm going to get your email address and I'm going to put together the agreement and I'm going to put it together exactly as you said, when you get it, you may have a question or two. So can I speak with you again today at two 30, yep. maybe okay. clear up any questions. And if at two 30, I make you feel comfortable about everything and everything looks the way you want it to look. What happens next then Ricky? Uh, we'll be done. Gotcha. Sounds great. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye. Critique me. That was the close. And he threw a bunch of shit at me, y'all. That was good. <laughs> you did good. He sure did. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the main thing I noticed is that you listened uh, the whole time and you, you, you know, you processed everything and, and 
you know, you allowed him to believe that you had his best interests at heart. I think that that's always key in these conversations is they have to feel like you're trying to help them win. And I think that came across. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have, did you notice I asked tons of questions? Mm -hmm. Tons of questions. And if you force me to answer a question, I always follow it up with, so if I put that in the agreement today and send it over to you, is that something you feel comfortable with signing or yep. not or no? Yep. If you're going to force me to, to cough up something, I'm going to ask you, if I cough this up, will you sign the damn paper? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Don't just ask me to cough up you know, give you concessions and I'll do this. And if I did that and oh, I'll, what if I did this and can I show you these? And, you know, I will, if you'll sign this shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. Like give and take, this is a negotiation. See, yeah. don't forget that. That's really a, a big, uh, a big key in the closing. I find yeah. is to, is to be able to, be able to, to go back to asking, hey, if I if we if I do this, if I make this right, are you are you ready to do this with me today? Because I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you did something that 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 I'm always conscious. Of. Uh oh, <laughs> I do so, something I'm always conscious of is letting them know that the paperwork is going to have exactly what we talked about, and that given that that's all it's going to have on there. Um, I might, do I have your commitment that you're just going to sign it because we've already gone over all of the details of the paperwork. This is just yeah. going to be a formality. Yeah. And, and notoriously they do have a question that pops up when they see the document. Right. So that's why I've learned to tag on, Hey, you know, let's talk again. At, I'll call you to follow up at two 30. If it hasn't been signed, I want to ask, you know, I want you to ask any questions. Let's, let's clear it up. Let's finalize it. And if I do make you feel comfortable at two 30, what happens next? You tell me yeah. if the guy says anything other than, yes, we got a deal. I need to do some more work or I need to cut bait. I need to pull away. I need to do something because yeah. he's not, he's not closing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ricky, is this fun? Oh Yeah. I see you over grinning, man. Yeah, I need I this. This is what I need. <laughs> I love it, I dude. I love it. You can get around most objections by asking questions. Right. I was telling a one-on-one uh, -on -one student last night, there's a movie called uh, The Gambler, and it's a remake of an older movie, but it's this one's got Marky Mark in it, <laughs> Marky Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> and... Uh, there's the bar scene. He goes into the bar and he sits down at the table. John Goodman's there too. And this cutie little waitress comes up and she says, what do you have? And Marky Mark looks at her and he says, I don't know. Bring me something. And she says, there's 175 beer selections in this bar. Don't put that shit on me. And turns around and walks off. <laughs> you know a lot of us are getting to the closing section and we don't really know what the customer wants and we have 175 different things we could could do or could say and which one's the right one don't put that shit on me mr homeowner and i'm gonna ask you more questions and so they spent a couple different times and i get it to the closing but when i get to that point i couldn't I couldn't see it through at that point. Yeah. Well, was it because their motivation level was low? Well, or? I wasn't worth a shit, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, did, I just, did, I don't know. I couldn't push it, push that last leg in for some reason. Okay. Maybe well, I was scared, you know, got to ask more questions, maybe ask more questions in the, in the closing section. You know, I'm, I'm all about that when they, when they start throwing objections at me, they're buying signals. They're, they're asking you and telling you I'm getting close. If you can just conquer this next few hurdles, I'm going to throw at you. I'll do whatever you want. Okay. Right, okay. And then, and then, so they'll throw an objection at you like you did me. And most of the time I have a very short pithy response, if any at all. And then I just follow it up with a question, you right. know, 
Mr. Like, like, for example, you said, well, I'm going to need some money down. Whoa. I wasn't expecting that. You hadn't breathed the word of that. Okay. Well, how much are you talking about? Like, you know, I need skin in the game. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. I hear a lot of the meat you skin know? in the game. <laughs> Most of the time, I can work with a lot of what they want. So let me ask you a question. So when the drugger see me skin in the game, so what would your response be to that? Because my skin in the game can be, I have skin in the game too because I'm, I'm marking this property. Yeah, even though you say I'm not spending enough, that, you don't know I'm not spending any money to, to market this property. So I have skin in the game too. Yeah, yeah. When a homeowner says... Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to need to see some skin in the game. Okay. Th they're asking for money. Right. So I'll just say, well, what do you mean? I'll make them say, we saw two examples in two different role plays today where the dollar amount the homeowner said was actually pretty reasonable. <laughs> a a $250,000 house and he only wants 5k down. You know what? I, I I'll probably get 10, 15 K on down payment on that. Right. So I can probably peel off five to that guy. I already know I got this deal in the bag. I'm just trying to talk you down for shits and gigs <laughs> right? for fun. Right. Right. So, you know, I, and you know, I did, I got an extra thousand bucks. It only took me about 10 seconds to earn. Right. How, how do you handle when you get in, a lot more money than they're getting. I mean, how, how do you handle an objection like that? Do they know what you're getting? I mean, did they, no. did they ever ask her? No, not, not really. I mean, a, a true motivated seller isn't concerned about what's in it for you. Right. Okay. They're concerned about what's in it for them. Yep. And if you're making that offer to them and they get everything they want, most of them don't even wonder what you're making. They don't even give a shit. Okay, and I've done a couple of deals, uh, and I guess that was it. They was more motivated, and I was scared. Yeah. You know, so, I've had them push me though, and I've, I'll, you know, how much money are you going to make on this deal? <clears throat> Honestly, I don't really know. I don't really know, uh, Mister Homeowner, because I, I haven't really pre-qualified the tenant buyer going in yet, because you and I don't even have an agreement yet. Right. So, so as soon as I get, you, as soon as you and I get an agreement, we'll we'll be able to find a tenant buyer to go in there and, and uh, you know, finish our qualification process on them and all that. And uh, you know, I, I don't know how much money they'll be wanting to invest into the property deal. You know, at this point, I, I usually make a few thousand dollars. Is that going to be a problem? That's the long one to answer, but I ended, you could just say it with the last two sentences. Well, I usually make a, a few thousand dollars. Is that going to be a problem? Right. Okay. If that's a problem, then, you know, maybe this isn't the right deal. And I like the way you do that. I'd rather be straight up with them and lose the deal than think that, let them think I'm doing something shady or behind their oh, back yeah. or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody got any other uh, comments or questions or anything? It's uh, It's been a good role play, guys. I think I've, I've enjoyed it at least. Thank you for uh, letting me talk so damn much. <laughs> I used to have one. He has something in the, in the Oh comments. yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh objection. Market is so bad. How can you find a tenant buyer in when we could not get one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Homeowner, that's a great question. Um, I don't know how you look for tenant buyers, but we have tenant buyers that come to us on the regular. Well, this is our business. So I mean I don't know if that helps you or not, but uh, we're really good at what we do. <laughs> you know, that that's basically my response. You know, we're really good at what we do. Uh, I, I mean, and we are. The next objection is a little bit more intense. Market is bad. How do I know the banks will even be lending money in two years? Yeah, I don't know. That's a great question, Mr. Homeowner. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. But what I do know is, is that if the banks aren't lending money in two years, what would happen then? What, what are your you thoughts? Right. What are you going to do then? <laughs> because he's going to answer his own stupid question. Well, if in two years the banks aren't owning, I guess we're just going to have to keep renting to them for a while. Yes, sir. That sounds reasonable to me. If I put that in the agreement, does that make you feel more comfortable? And can we go ahead and move forward today? These are stupid 
you know, stupid questions like, do you have a, do you have a website I can go see? Right. Really what they're saying is, is can I blow you off right now with this website bullshit? Mr. Homeowner, why do I need a website? Well, I need to see who you are and find out what you're all about and know more about your company. I don't know if you can show me your company financials, Mr. Homeowner. <laughs> My grandmother has a company website and she's 107. I don't know that it means a lot. I'm just a local investor. I'm looking to buy a property. I think you're trying to sell one. Is a website the only thing keeping us from doing business today or was there more? This is stupid. I'm just calling you out on it. And I'm going to talk to you in this patronizing sounding voice the entire time. Because you and I both know that's a stupid, stupid question. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. Play with it. Have fun with it. Practice with it. You're going to make mistakes, but it doesn't matter. The right motivated seller oftentimes will let you make mistakes and still want to do business with you. Okay. So don't think you have to be perfect. Just go out there and play with it. Have fun. Any questions, any comments before we sign off today? I appreciate you guys. Good you guys stuff, my, bro. Thank you. Bye everybody. You guys are my Have friends. So, replay come on in a couple of minutes. Same to you. Oh yeah. Replays on. Replays on. Hey, no, no shut up money show tomorrow, guys, because people are traveling and doing things and whatever for the 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 government holiday and we're just I don't know. Let's not do it tomorrow. <laughs> right, I'll see you next good. week. Love yeah. you Betty, guys. Have a happy forest. Stay safe. Yes, love you, Debbie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.